What's going on collectors? This is Parlay J here with you today. And today we are gonna to talk about my top 10 survival tips for making the best of your trip to a baseball card show. Now I have had the privilege of going to a number of baseball card shows in the past year. They were great times. I made videos of a lot of them. You've probably seen a number of them. Um, going to a show is probably one of the most fun parts of collecting. Not only because you can go there and there's great deals and stuff like that, but there's also other collectors there and there's just tons of people around that just love the hobby. And so when you get around that, it's kind of like a great community to be around. Everybody's interested in the same thing. Um, there's always good conversation. You meet new people. Sometimes you run into people that you know you meet online, on YouTube, on Instagram, and so on and so forth. But if you love baseball, or sports of any kind actually, because typically they're all sports card shows. I just go there for baseball particularly. But if you love baseball and you go to a baseball card show, it is one heck of a time. So what I wanna do is give you my 10 tips on the best possible things that you can do to optimize your card show experience. Now, number one, make sure you get there early. The worst thing that you could do is rush into a card show and then you just feel like, I gotta see everything, I gotta see everything. What I like to do is I like to go in kind of knowing how much time that I have, I have a plan and I wanna get there early so that I can kind of like scope things out, check out the tables, walk by, see what's what, see who's where, see where, you know, it's kind of, is it heavy in baseball? Is it heavy in football? Sometimes there's autograph signings and that's the big draw. So getting there early gives you the opportunity to kind of just ease into it, take your time, go and get some breakfast if it's in the morning. That's what you know I did last time I went up to a show. Uh, there was a diner nearby, I stopped by, got some food. You don't wanna go into a show hangry, <laughs> definitely not, because you're either gonna feel rushed or you're gonna start making bad decisions based on that. So number one is definitely Go early, get there early and give yourself time. Relax, enjoy it, enjoy the ride, however you get there. If you go with friends, enjoy being with friends. That is definitely the way to start things. Number two, you wanna make sure that you allot yourself enough time. So if you get there early, that allows you to allot yourself time. So the best part about it is you can actually plan your whole day if you wanted to, maybe you just like to wing it and that's cool too. But if you go to a show that's got lots of tables and lots of inventory, you're gonna wanna really be able to see everything that's out there. So if you, you're not in a rush, you're gonna really be able to hit the tables that you want. So what I like to do is I kind of scout out the place when I get there at first and I'll try to start on one end and I'll try to work my way down and I'll try to do it in an organized fashion. This helps you in two ways, one, you kind of can track what you've seen already and you know, hey, you know, I've seen this, I'm moving on to the next and it gives you a little bit of order so that you know like when you're at the beginning and when you're at the end. Number two is that when you see cards early on, it gives you the opportunity to either take a pause and say, hey, maybe there's another table that I can get a bit of a better deal at whether it's on that one card or whether it's uh, another dealer who has more than one card that you like, including that one, and you can bundle it and get a nice value you know, discount there. But it gives you the opportunity to see what you want and then peruse around. And then if all else fails, come back and you'll just pick up that original card, provided nobody else bought it, of course. Um, but it gives you that option, which is definitely you know, helpful. And again, back to number one, it lets you slow things down, do it in an organized fashion, get what you want done, and optimize you know, how much ultimately you're spending on cards. Number three, make sure you bring cash. Now, I pay for everything in credit cards too, but when you go to a card show, we're dealing with, um, typically dealers are in their 40s, 50s, 60s, um, there's definitely a lot of dealers that are younger and there's definitely dealers that accept credit cards, but bringing cash does two things. One, some tables only accept cash. Um, most of them don't at this point, but some do. And when you pay with cash, you know, you can kind of work in a little bit better of a deal sometimes. So dealers prefer cash and so does mostly everybody who's trying to sell something. So bring cash, bring enough cash, 
um, and make sure that you are willing and able to pay with it and you're not just tied down to a credit card. It'll also help you in the long run, you know, not overspending as well. Number four, nice segue, set a budget. This is probably the most important thing that I could stress out of this top 10 list. You have to go into this unless you have an endless supply of money and you're willing to spend it on endless supplies of cards, which is awesome if you can, you need to set a budget, whether it's $50, $200, $1,000, whatever it is that you can afford, set your budget and stick to it. Really, really try to stick to it. It forces you not to make irrational purchases because when you're in a sea of all of these cards and there's so many that you want, that you would love to have, being on a budget kind of gives you a moment to check yourself and say, hey, I've only got you know $100 to spend or $200 to spend. What can I get for that? And what's really the highest in priority? So if you come across this card that's like, you know, pretty cool, it's not been on your top five, and you're like, man, gotta have it, gotta have it, maybe you'll think twice because you're really after, you know, a certain card. So setting a budget really gives that discipline so that you don't go and end up overspending. Number five. Some of these card shows are multi-day. Um, some are just one day. If you go to a card show that is multi-day, try, and this is gonna sound strange, try to get there on the second to last or the last day of the show. There's pros and cons to this. So we'll do the cons first. The cons are obviously that there might've been things that you wanted that sold. Now, depending on how big the card show is, you may or may not have to deal with that. The biggest pro though, is you've got dealers that have paid for a spot um, for the duration of the show, number of days, number of hours, whatever the case may be. And if you are there at the end, there is a chance that they're just looking to offload inventory because they had thought they were gonna sell more than they did. And you may have the opportunity to get slightly better price. Now, I'm not saying shake dealers down, they're people too. Um, it's all part of, you know, we have to, pay our fair share buying so that dealers can continue selling so that the whole hobby doesn't collapse. But sometimes you wanna save money, right? And we know that dealers often do, you know, not go in with their best price first, no fault against them. That's just how sales goes. So what I would suggest is if you go there on the second to last or the last day, there may be incentive um, for dealers to sell cards at a slightly lower price than they were asking at the beginning. So bear that in mind. Of course, it's up to your schedule. If you can't get there, then this goes out the window. Or if it's one day, that's a different story too. If it's one day, you can consider trying to go toward the end of the day to close it out rather than at the beginning. Um, but again, all up to you, depending on how much time you wanna spend there. But try to get there toward the end of the show. Number six. Before you go to a show, check it out if PSA, JSA, or BGS are actually gonna be on site at this card show. It's definitely a really cool service when you can go straight up there and you can actually um, hand your cards off, sit face to face with a grader themselves. You can actually watch them. They don't grade the cards typically on site. Sometimes they do. Um, so you wanna check that out too. Usually they accept uh, submissions live on site. So you're definitely gonna wanna make sure that before you go to any card show, and you can actually Google this, um, if you go to PSA's website or if you Google um, card grading on site, card show, things like that, you will find websites that have lists of shows that will actually have PSA, JSA, and BGS at them. Uh, best place to go is to the PSA, JSA, BGS website. They usually list what shows they're gonna be at throughout um, the entire year. So definitely check that one out. Number seven, don't be afraid to make offers. I've said this in my video on eBay too. It's a little bit different because you're behind a keyboard on eBay and making an offer rather than face to face with a dealer. But don't be afraid. Dealers, just like dealers on eBay, usually the card is marked up. And that's to account for the folks that come in, they're not really sure what the value is or they're not willing to negotiate or intimidated by negotiation and they'll just pay whatever the, the sticker price is. Good for them, for those that they get you know, the sales from, but what I would suggest is negotiate. And you know, negotiate nicely, don't come off like a jerk, 
um, but you want to at least throw an offer out there. And a lot of ways to do that is to inspect the card um, and call out. If there's some you know, issues, if it's a loose card, if there are dings, dents, the corners are rough, it's off-centered, point that out. And that's valid reasoning why the card value is likely less than the sticker price. Um, and oftentimes they're willing to take the price down a little bit. Another way is if you buy in bundles. So if you're at a table and you're buying from one dealer and there's one card you really, really like, and you happen to look around and see a couple of other cards that you either really like also or kind of like, if you bundle them together, you know, very good chance that a dealer is gonna take money off of that entire lot for you. Um, the last show that I went to, my buddy Silver Jackify, he bundled about five cards together. He ended up getting a Joe Montana rookie. I know we're talking baseball right now, but if he would have got that alone, he probably would have paid you know, more uh, individually than he would have in a bundle with some other cards. And he picked up some Acuna card, uh, rookie card, and a couple others too, which was a nice snag. But definitely, always, always try to do this, not only at shows, but on eBay too. Buy in bulk from the same seller. It is incentive for them to discount, and it is also incentive um, for them to make the sale because now they're getting rid of more inventory in one shot rather than waiting for another customer to come along. Number eight, don't be afraid to make friends. Like I said, you're at the show because you enjoy the hobby, you enjoy baseball, you enjoy sports, you just enjoy being out with people, I don't know, whatever it is. But if you enjoy the hobby and you enjoy baseball and you're around tons of other people, maybe hundreds of other people, maybe thousands if you're at the National or something like that, make friends, talk to people. Uh, a lot of people are really friendly. Like sure, of course, there's gonna be people that don't wanna talk to you, but don't be shy about it. I'm up there at, at shows and I'm you know talking to people all the time and it's a really good time because you come away with cool friendships. Uh, maybe you make friends with folks that are on other YouTube channels. Maybe they're on Instagram, maybe you follow them, maybe they're dealers, uh, maybe they have connections you know, as well, maybe you have common interests, like the, whole, the possibilities are endless. Don't be shy, it's really, there's no need to be shy, it's just like anything in life. It's like trying to make an offer, um, what's the worst thing? You get shot down and somebody doesn't want to talk back to you, cool, then you just go look at the cards and buy the next card and if a conversation gets struck up next with somebody else, awesome. But make friends, it's what the whole thing is for. It's a really cool community, the hobby is a great time, so share that with people and enjoy it. Talk to the dealers, the dealers are really cool guys. Um, a lot of times people you know, have preconceived notions of dealers, ah, they're just trying to get a buck, make a buck, take my money, whatever. No, nah, man, they're really cool. They're actually very friendly for the most part. I mean, listen, everybody's different, but when I go and I talk to dealers, it's not all business. We'll talk about the sport. We'll talk about whatever comes up. So dealers are cool people too. Don't count them out, but talk to everybody. Talk to as many people as you can. It's fun, have fun with it. Number nine, document your trip with video if you can. Why? Because you can do something like this. You could have a YouTube channel. You could start an Instagram, a Facebook page and you could share the fun and the enjoyment of being at a show and purchasing cards um, with other people in the hobby that enjoy it too. I mean, definitely share. Again, it's the hobby. We're all in it together. So let's share this with as many people as possible so you can get more people into the hobby and more people enjoying baseball too. Because why keep baseball and the hobby a secret, right? It's freaking great. We love it. it brings a lot of joy. It's documented on video. It'll be really cool to look back on it too. One day you might say, hey, you know, remember this card show that we went to where I got this card? A lot of fun. And speaking of fun, number 10, just have fun with it. This is not a serious thing unless baseball card sales is your lifeblood and it is feeding your entire family. And if you don't make that sale, you will go hungry. Just enjoy yourself. Have a fun time. Do all the other things that I suggested. Stay within a budget, give yourself time, make friends, be friendly, be cool, make offers, and just enjoy the ride. The last time I was there, I, I ran into uh, Ricky Russo at a card show that I was at. That was very cool. Another card show that I was at, I ran into Gary Vaynerchuk. That was really cool. So what the hell? I just had fun with it and just enjoyed it. Walk around, do what you gotta do. If it's a great day, enjoy the day. Nothing could be better, right? So those are my top 10 survival tips for making the most of going to your next sports card or baseball card show. For me, I call it a baseball card show still. 
Um, I hope this was helpful. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it made sense to you and you agree. And if you didn't agree, let me know. Comment down below. Let me know what's up. Let me know what your experiences were like at card shows. Um, and if you've tried any of these and what it was like when you did these kinds of things at shows too. I love when you guys comment. Thank you so much as always. Hope you enjoyed. Hope to see you guys at a show in the future. Until then, I'm Parlay J. Take care. Spike your hair. See you next time. Mm -hmm.